is a forward roll to a floor jade split. So for this one, you don't have to be able to do a jade split on the pole, on any other apparatus. You don't even have to have a full split for this one. Um, I would highly recommend before starting on this one, make sure you warm up your neck. And of course, if you have any neck injuries, this might not be the best move for you. Keep that in mind, okay? With a forward shoulder roll, with any of the shoulder rolls, you shouldn't be placing pressure on your neck and your head. The pressure should be more on the shoulder, okay? And you can pick whichever shoulder that you wanna roll over. You're gonna have a dominant one, right? We all have a favorite. Yes, I'll roll to both sides, but we all have a favorite, okay? If you're trying to plot which shoulder to roll over and which split, because which is your fave and fabulous one, whichever shoulder you roll over, that's gonna be the leg that's closest to your face, okay? So if I'm rolling over my right shoulder, I'm gonna need more hamstring flexibility back of the leg on that side, okay? So if you need to kind of strategize on that for a moment, pause, think about it, do that. Okay, so for this roll, you can get into this floor position however you want. I'm gonna start from kneeling and take it with a little sassy down, okay? But basically we're gonna start on our belly, okay? And this one does take up a bit of space, okay? So if you are in a small space, definitely make sure you don't have any sharp objects nearby because sometimes things don't go quite how we planned the first time, okay? So just, of course, as always, be safe. So I'm gonna start on my knees and I'm gonna roll it down to get down to my stomach. And like I said, this is just one way you can get to your stomach. You can get to your stomach however you want. You can start that way if you want to. I would say also on this little tidbit, um, depending on which floor surface that you're on, I'm on a slidey wood floor and I'm wearing clothes because then I will slide more. Um, if you're on a hard surface and you're not wearing as much clothes, you're going to stick a little bit. It's just different. And also practicing shoulder rolls in the beginning, I would recommend putting a heavy sweatshirt on. Once you've got it down, it's not going to bother your shoulder as much. You're going to do it a couple times. But when you're learning something new, it does put a little pressure on that shoulder, especially depending on how bony you are or how sensitive your skin is. Okay, so you might want to put either a long sleeve shirt and or a sweatshirt just to kind of save your shoulder a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna start on my knees. I'm gonna put my hands down to the floor, somewhere close to my knees. I'm gonna tuck my chin initially, dive down. I'm gonna think about trying to drag my nipples across my knees, whether they actually touch or not, don't care, but that's like the direction I'm aiming, okay? I'm gonna drop my head down, and as soon as my head comes down, nipples down, I'm gonna let my booty come up slide it out. You can bend one knee, leave both knees straight, whichever you prefer. Okay, so our goal is to get down to where we're on our stomach here. Like I said, one leg can be bent, both legs bent, both legs straight, you pick. So now we're going to get into our roll portion into the jade split. I'm going to roll over my right shoulder for two reasons. One, it's my favorite side. Two, I want my forward leg to end up towards my audience, okay? So if you're going to be putting this jade split roll into a performance piece, a competition piece, or you're just videoing it for, you know, the Instagram, you're going to want to pick the direction that you're going so that your forward leg ends up towards the camera. That will be the most flattering angle, just telling you now, okay? So my right side is towards you, okay? because I'm gonna roll over my right shoulder. So from here, when I'm ready to go into my roll, hand position, whichever shoulder I'm rolling over, that hand is gonna start back. And placement of this arm, it can be palm down or palm up, okay? Personal preference. Um, sometimes I go with my palm down, sometimes I go with my palm up. I don't have a huge preference. Sometimes it depends on the surface I'm on. My other hand, which you're gonna see some other angles, but it's in like a push-up position, as if I'm gonna do a push-up. How close or how far away it's gonna be from your body, it's gonna depend on your personal preference, okay? Some people like to have both hands back like this, so you can play around with that. Sometimes it's easier to start initially the motion with both hands back and push your butt up, like you're going into like a, a chin stand and kind of a yoga style, okay? My personal preference is I like to have the other hand in a push-up position. So I have one hand fingers back, one hand elbow up, fingers pointing straight ahead or out to the side, doesn't really matter, okay? And since I'm gonna be rolling over my right shoulder, now I'm going to turn my head away from you because I don't wanna roll over my face. I don't know about you, but it's not a good time. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my head towards my opposite shoulder, the shoulder I'm not rolling over, and I'm gonna tuck my chin, okay? Reason for that is that way it opens up more space here so that I can roll over my shoulder, not putting as much force, pressure, all that on my head and my neck, which is our goal, right? Okay, so I'm gonna really tuck my chin. I'm gonna push with this hand, push with the other hand, 
Legs can be bent or straight, okay? Keep in mind, this move, like so many moves, there's gonna be variations depending on your body type, your proportions, um, your flexibility, and your personal preference, okay? You might have the flexibility to do it one way and be like, mm, I don't wanna do it that way, okay? So depending on your hamstring flexibility, your legs don't have to straight, stay as straight as long as mine is, as long as mine are. You can bend them, you can keep them straight, Okay, you're gonna kind of stylize it based on your personal preference and current abilities, okay? So I'm gonna pike up, okay? My goal is to roll through and end up in a plow position. So chin is tucked towards the shoulder. I'm not rolling over, so I'm rolling over my right shoulder, which means I'm tucking my chin to my left side. I'm gonna push with my hands. I'm sliding on my toes. Once I get to here, I'm gonna really tuck my chin, roll my head all the way through, so I'm in a plow position. Now, right here, this is the part where a lot of people fall over. Your bum is going to come down very quickly, which means as I come through here, my hands are going to circle, okay? So think you're trying to make a full circle. Like if you're finger painting, you would end up with almost a complete circle on the ground with your fingers. My hands go here. They're going to catch my butt so it doesn't come tumbling down like a pile of bricks. Now, from here, as we already said earlier, whichever shoulder I'm rolling over, that's going to be the hamstring leg or the front leg of the front split. So I'm going to take my right hand, I'm gonna put it not at my butt crack, to the side, to my hip, okay? Personal preference on hand placement, I find it's less strenuous on the wrist to have the fingers pointing out to the side versus fingers back. If you go fingers back, the deeper you go in your split, the more pressure it puts on your wrist versus if fingers are to the side, it doesn't have to be as much pressure on the wrist, okay? So I'm gonna place my hand kind of, my heel of my hand is just above my hip bone now, once I'm here, I'm going to crunch through my right side and shift my butt cheeks towards that hand. I am no longer in a straight line. That is the goal, okay? My right leg, which is my front leg, I want to keep it as close to my face as possible. And depending on your flexibility, if that means you need to bend it to keep that knee close versus having it straight and go up here, do so. Like I said, it can be bent or straight, but try to keep it as close to your face as possible. Now... This opposite hand is pressing on the floor. That's to keep my booty from, you know, tumbling to the ground. Now, the back leg of the split, I'm going to bend. Think of trying to touch your butthole with your heel, okay? Then I'm going to keep trying to push my heel towards my butt, then my toe to the floor, and I'm going to really, really, really engage my glutes to extend that leg out. Then bend the leg, lower, and down. Okay, so a couple of things to think about here. The position of my booty, okay? My hand is not catching my booty center. My hand is catching my booty to the side, okay? So there's this crunch to the side, okay? Where your hand up, ends up on your butt, whether it's above your hip, below your hip, on your butt cheek, it is going to vary a little bit. I oftentimes will start with my heel and my hand above my hip, but depending on what I'm wearing, depending on how deep I'm going to the split, depending on, you know, I think sometimes my hand, I'll let it slide down so it's below my hip, okay? So it doesn't have to be above your hip bone. Once again, our arm proportions, leg proportions, torso proportions, all different, okay? So tricks are going to look different on different bodies. Okay, it doesn't mean they're wrong. That's just your version, which is awesome. Okay, so as you're opening into the split, as we drop the back leg, there's a tipping motion, okay, which is the reason why I said this front leg, you want to try to keep it as close to your face as possible. Okay, even if that means that you keep it bent so that it stays more compressed. For most of us, we have better compression when our knee is bent than when our leg is straight. Okay, so the first few times trying this move, you might want to like, don't worry about your lines. They don't have to be perfect in the beginning. You know, they don't have to be perfect ever if that's not your concern. Okay, but in the beginning, when you go into this, it might be easier to like have a little bit of a micro bend, soften this leg and really focus on compression. Like you're smooshing an imaginary tennis ball here between your thigh and your chest to squeeze this leg in. The closer you keep this leg to your face, the lower you're going to be able to drop your back leg. Okay, and that's not just a flexibility thing, it's a balance thing, okay? So we're up here, we've got the booty crunch to the side. I'm gonna go heel to my butthole, keeping this leg towards my face. Like I said, it can be bent or straight. You can even keep both legs bent the entire time, okay? If, for example, you're lowering this back leg and you lose your balance, pretend like you meant to do it. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I like lowering the back leg with it bent initially is A, if you lose your balance, your hand slips off your butt, you planned, you know, a little bit off balance wise, 
it kind of looks like you meant to do it. Two, the second reason is our glute engagement to open up our hip flexor, our back leg is gonna be better if you start with that leg bent, okay? Over time, as you start to tap into that power of the booty and opening up your hip flexors, you can do it bent, you can do it straight, but I would highly recommend working on it bent initially until you feel like you fully master that and it feels good. And then if you wanna take it to the straight leg version just because you like the look of that, awesome, okay? So let's walk through this all one more time. Okay, so you're gonna start on your belly or on your knees, whichever you prefer. If you wanna do the little sassy down or just go straight to your belly and go from there, okay? I'm rolling over my right shoulder, which means my right leg is going to be close to my face. Head goes down, booty goes up, head switches sides, touching the chin or tucking the chin. Right hand pushes with the arms straight, palm up or palm down. Left hand pushes in a push up position. I'm gonna tuck my chin, roll both hands through to catch my booty. Okay, legs can be bent or straight. Hand goes to my butt, fingers slightly out, crunch my butt to the side. Right leg stays close to my face. Left leg heel to my butt crack. Extend, 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 bend, and drop it down. And there is your floor jade split. So, have some fun with this one, play around with it. The nice thing about this one, it doesn't matter what your apparatus of choice is. Maybe you do pole, maybe you do aerial, maybe you just are playing around with flexibility stuff and this is a fun shape to add into it. It's a way to challenge your split because there's a lot of active flexibility going on in this one, okay? Your booty is really gonna have to work to drop that back leg, okay? So have some fun, put it in a combo, do it by itself. Let me know how it goes.